Look, uh, people are probably listening thinking we're crazy. I, I kind of think you two are crazy. I, I Do you really? Yeah. You don't think Paul Pelosi's out of control? He got a DUI. He's 83 years old. <laughs> yeah. Why the fuck what are you doing? drinking Not and driving? Mention, he's You're so rich. rich. <laughs> You're inside <laughs> trading all day. There's like, a Twitter account that literally follows how much... They, yeah. NVIDIA, we're going to sell this talk yeah. of the China thing. Oh, happened. shocker. I mean, I'm going to get day. wasted and drive my fucking Benz home. <laughs> I mean, come on. This guy's a clown. <laughs> he's a great clown. So, Alan, you don't... You're, are you buying the story completely? I think it's really easy to come up with a narrative because Pelosi has kind of become a meme yeah. with the insider trading. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, so Don't you think that's a problem? Yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> fucking committing crimes! <laughs> In the Damn. open. And when they're asking her if she'll ban it, she's like, no. Yeah. Cash. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, group chat. Cash. Cash. Happy Halloween, ladies and gentlemen. We are reporting live from episode 700. That's and crazy. There are people who've listened to all 700 episodes. Do you think? 100%. There's 100%. 100% there are people that have listened to all 700 episodes. Wow. Okay, if you're one of those people, hit us up. I don't think we really have anything for you, but we're really grateful. <laughs> <laughs> we have a good conspiracy for you. We got you. a hot episode. You know what? If you listen to all 700 episodes, DM us. We will tell you a conspiracy that'll blow your mind. Yeah. How about that? Good deal. And we'll tell you what really happened at the Pelosi residence. Big tinfoil <laughs> hats on we'll uh, my two tiny whiteies. My two podcasts. <laughs> I don't know if you saw the spirit Halloween costume. In. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly what it is. Hammer underwear. <laughs> oh my God. I love that trend this year. Yeah. So it's Halloween. Uh, uh, well, it'll be Halloween, actually, when most of you are listening to this episode. Um, but there was a trend this year of like the Spirit Halloween um, um, packaging, and then you put anything you wanted in it. Next year, I, I got to take advantage of that. Yeah, it's you know, so you know, good. We, we got at least do a group chat. Yeah, one, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, okay, we have a hell of an episode. Uh, we got conspiracy theories. We got a little Kanye. A little Elon. We got a little Elon. We got a little Kyrie Irving. We got some business news. We got... It was a great episode. I and mean, we got a little bit of everything. Yeah, yeah. Good one for 700. Yeah, this, I'm proud of this for 700. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let's get into it. You guys ready? Let's do it. Let's go. We are in the studio. We are live. We are group chat. Woo! We got a packed house and the energy's up. Uh, Halloween we, weekend. Halloween weekend. I didn't even think to ask the youth about that. So we have the youth corner. Yeah. yeah. And I walk in and I hear these words. Jake Paul is our generation's Muhammad Ali. <laughs> Verbatim. He really said that? That's yeah. what he said. <laughs> Verbatim. And I'll say it again. See? <laughs> so Muhammad Ali, widely known as one of the greatest athletes of all time, yep. did incredible like social, political activism. Civil work. And, well, sure, and Jake incredibly Paul, talented. <laughs> yes. <laughs> He's like as legendary as it gets as I an mean, I would say probably, arguably most athletes' favorite athlete. Yeah. Yes. If you took he, a poll of every athlete's if favorite. You could, if you consider like in what climate he was the best athlete, yeah. it's way harder. Yeah, got shipped off to war. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> but Jake Paul, neck and neck. N Jake Paul was shipped <laughs> off to Puerto Rico to avoid taxes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually scary that the youth think that. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And I don't think, I think our boy here is like kind of hamming it up, but I think- He's a big ham. He's a ham. <laughs> yeah. But I think that like a lot of the youth don't see the difference. Ham or no ham, you're not beating Anderson Silva unless you got some type of skill. So Jake Paul- yeah, so I think drama could beat Anderson Silva. <laughs> so I, I, I would never take the risk, but it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> and you look, get, uh, I watched. I so, so I, what, set up the fight. So, I, don't know if people I mean, Jake Paul wrong. fought Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva is forty-seven years old, right? Forty-seven. Yeah. And he's and Jake and Anderson Silva was one of the greatest UFC that UFC fighters of all time. But but you know now he's forty-seven. And look, I'm going to be really careful here because I don't. I think what Jake is doing takes a lot of balls. It is very dangerous. 
It is you're you're risking getting knocked out in front of a crowd of people. He is slowly kind of stepping up the competition. But then I also want to be realistic that, you know, we're talking about a 47-year-old man here. That Jake Paul next is like George Foreman. That's who he's fighting yeah. next. Would he fight yeah. Mike Tyson? He called out Canelo. <laughs> so Canelo, is in he his, still in his prime? Yeah. He's to at the end of it, but he is. I mean, he would maul Jake Paul. So the next fight set up so far as Jake wants it is Nate Diaz. So you think that's a good fight. Yeah. A lot of pay-per-views. But Nate, but Nate Diaz, Diaz is also UFC. A UFC. He, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying. I'd rather see Jake Paul, Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan's yeah, like boxing, 55 years no old. Yeah, I mean, if you beat up Anderson Silva, that guy's only 47. <laughs> yeah. is I don't know. Rogan Joe Rogan's rich. <laughs> rich. He's just like Rogan. Here's the thing. He, like, he's I'm Rogan wanna, it up. This is a hard thing to comment on because I feel like I'm saying two things. If Jake Paul fought a mid-level boxer at his weight class, he would lose. No question. But that would be stupid of him to do because he would lose a fight. His whole thing would be over and yeah. it would get 50 pay-per-view buys because yeah. no one would give a shit. Uh, so I think he should keep doing what he's doing. And I think Nate Diaz would be a great fight. But he also called out Canelo Alvarez. I think he's serious. It, you if know, he just, beats Canelo, then we could start having different conversations. Book it. Bookmark that. He's I mean, gonna... there's not like, I'm trying to think of what to compare that to that you guys would. It's literally who just retired from uh, tennis, uh, the Federer? Federer. Federer. Okay. It is literally like if I said, give me four years, I'm going to dedicate my life to tennis and then I'm going to call out Roger Federer. Today, Roger Federer. Right. That, that's not, not happening. Roger Federer but, in four years. Yeah. It's just like, okay, ha, ha, this is fun, but like that's not even, there's no chance. But Nate Diaz, great fight. He probably beats Nate Diaz. Why doesn't he fight a boxer? Because it kills the... Yeah, you're going to lose. <laughs> I'm just telling you, like, I... Um, like, uh, so you're, you're pretty active in the boxing community in Los Angeles. Yeah. What do they, what do they think about all this? Because they take it seriously, right? Yeah, I think at this point, they don't... The people that I'm around uh, just don't care anymore. Like, they're like, okay, whatever. Like, he has a fight coming. Like, they're not mad about it. They're not excited about they it. They don't care. They don't care. Okay. But look, I just, it's a hard, I, I literally, I was thinking like, do I even want to comment on this? Because it's so easy to sound like a Jake Paul hater. I'm not hating on, I think what he's doing is cool. And as opposed to like, keep making YouTube vlogs or go on this crazy career of like fighting people in stadiums. It's incredible. Yeah. It's so cool. I like it. Just when the Muhammad Ali things start popping up. Yeah. Well, that's all. He didn't say that. This <laughs> idiot said it. I mean, it's his fans. Nobody that are out sells your show. But I get it too because I watched it with Kareen and her friends and whatever. And like, obviously, they don't know boxing at all. And they're like, Yeah, why not? What's the difference? Yeah. Like, this looked, I think he's a real boxer. Yeah. And the, that name is more familiar to them yeah. than any like. Well, well to boxer. them, he successfully transitioned to being a pro boxer. And it's so easy to say like greatest MMA fighter of all time, legend, hundreds of fights, whatever. And, and like, kind of like you can kind of mentally get past the 47 years old thing. Right. Yeah. Well, I, I think to me, it's very similar to the statistic we were reading that said that, um, Gen Z and now more millennials are getting their news from TikTok mm -hmm. more so than mainstream media. So, is it specifically TikTok or social media as a whole? No, TikTok. Oh man, I mean, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I believe mainstream it. Mainstream media has made a lot of mistakes, especially in the last few years. So, I don't blame the lack of trust there. But TikTok, TikTok's rough. The dangerous place to go. Yeah, think I mean, of all that control. Yeah, that China has exactly. They could tell you what news they want to spread. Like, think about the like the thing of like, oh, you know. Mainstream media, media is controlled by, on the left, it's George Soros. On the right, it's Roger Rails. It's evil. It My apologies. Is now, it is social media, but TikTok is number sure one. TikTok's a huge, yeah. yeah. Yeah, like for example, in China, I don't know if you guys saw that image when President Xi was basically getting donned as emperor for life, effectively, and there was a previous- Did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so for five more years. Yeah, it's for life. And what He's was that with him pulling the guy out? Yeah, of exactly. And the previous president, uh, Hu Jintao, got escorted out and they banned 
his name from all social media platforms in China. I mean, yeah. I liked when they were asking him to get up, him. ask him to get up. <laughs> Xi would looked at him like, he's like, yep. He yeah. didn't even look it at his like face. He literally... looked at him. He looked at him for in, right in the beginning. Just like, like, you're dead, buddy. Get the fuck out of yeah, here. Yeah, is he in jail? I don't know. It literally looked like they took him outside the door and fucking executed him. <laughs> yeah. like, that's just what it, the scene yeah. looked like. Yeah. yeah. You know? And everyone was just like, yeah, you know. See you later. So it's not five more years. This guy's for life. I like okay, how so, calm he was. So it, no, if TikTok doesn't get banned, in three years, they control 80% of our country's I, I, sentiment on so so i'll tell you it's we are 48 hours into a new regime at twitter yep it's been fun over there i love it it's been great i know people are very upset and ah, i'm leaving the platform i saw shonda rhymes post i'm out of here beat it like i mean come on it's just like come on <laughs> I, it's the same people that are like i'm leaving america if trump wins where are you going yeah, and also, where are you going? Right. Yeah, and yeah, enough. And, and e even though the, even that is bullshit, but at least you're talking about like a reality TV star as the president of our country. It's, pr it's pretty fucking crazy. Yeah, it's Twitter, guys. Yes, and then it's people. Elon so Musk. people are said they're leaving, and I have to say, like I check Twitter, you know, a few times a day, and I'm. I am all glued right now. It's fun. It's I thought wild. I was off Twitter until after the midterms. <laughs> yeah. Little no, did I know the I party. Mean, I mean, it was a one absolutely blockbuster weekend. Yep. I think the best part about it is more people on Twitter said they got fired from Twitter than have in entirety have ever worked for Twitter. Oh, yeah, Everyone yeah, yeah. just said I got laid off and I'm looking to start a new company. Yeah. So I'm looking for a new a, job. A New York Times uh, tech reporter tweeted so my understanding is that twitter headquarters the folks running things in the war room are elon musk david Sachs, jason calacanis and shiram from andreessen horowitz well jay Cal made it huh well ride or die yeah, yeah i He's, mean he, he dude he got to go to snl with him that's a real relationship so, so i just i thought he might have blown it in those texts when the raising money uh, oh. yeah i mean but that's his boy he's gonna ride okay. with him the, i think the the biggest moment of the twitter transition was two guys walked out with boxes i love it and basically said you know they got fired they were data scientists yeah. blah 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 one was rahul ligma yeah complete made one was up holding a michelle obama, obama. But that was yeah. fake right all fake, all yeah, fake. Yeah. and then one guy said you know i gotta go see my husband and wife <laughs> <laughs> and the I mean, and the CNBC reporter. This reported. is why we trust fucking TikTok. Yeah, because I I get it. You know what? Like, it is so easy to fool yeah. mainstream media. It is. You could say anything. These they want to believe yeah. that Elon Musk came in, fired everyone, and yeah. these two kids. By the way, they, that kid Rahul Ligma <laughs> yeah. is popping on social media. Is everyone is following him. He's like, he makes he's so funny. What's his name? His name Rahul Ligma. I mean, that's Made what up. his like. But I mean, is that his name. social media name. Yeah, I mean, no, it's like even it's just some bizarre name. I don't <laughs> even it. know zero zero interest or something like that. Got it. And he's just making a mockery of the whole thing. I'm gonna leave. I'm looking at. I'm joining A sixteen Z as a partner. Like whatever. Yeah. Because it's all bullshit. Yeah. It's all bullshit. And me. So I, I look. I I think people saying they're not going to be on Twitter because of Elon. I think that's dumb. Yeah. But the f flippant manner that he's taking over one of the news source of the world. Yeah. Right. Twitter is the biggest news platform in the world, and there's nothing close. Yeah. Well, TikTok. Maybe now. Yeah. 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 I mean, you're number two. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in terms of like breaking news and across any genre, it's Twitter. And how seriously is he going to take it? How, you know, it it seems a little flippant right now. Why is it flippant? He lit those C suites out of there. <laughs> don't you also think that like Get for a guy who out. just put 44 billion into something, it is top level, top tier marketing yes. for his new platform he just bought? In what sense? Like, if he's all serious and you just see Elon skirt by in a suit and whatever, it's like, oh, he bought it, cool. Everyone is talking about Twitter. Like, yeah, it's the, I think as he a cares. marketer, yeah, he's the fucking Jake Paul of billionaires, right? Uh, centurion billionaire. I'm just saying, like, how is the richest guy in the world also one of the best marketers, marketers in this like fuckery social media age? Yeah. He walked so, in with a goddamn sink. He walked in with a sink. 
He canned uh, the CEO, the CFO, the legal person, whatever. The CEO made $41 million. And now they're saying that there's no intention to pay any of it. It was because apparently there was a clause that said, if you have just cause, you can terminate him. You could say just cause he wasn't running the business. It was a shitty business. Oh, you're saying he's not getting a severance. No, that's, and their legal team has, is coming out and saying that. Like, they're, none of these people are getting their severance. What about the attorney? She's the one, she's the one that had a target on her back. Yeah. And she was so, on Rogan. Yeah. I mean, look, I think if you looked at it, um, he terminated them. One, obviously they're not aligned with his new vision. Two, if you look at the economics of Twitter, yeah. it's kind of scary because he has a lot of debt, uh, a lot of his personal stock. He's the, the interest payments are absurd and there's not enough free cash. So he has to cut expenses. That's yeah. the only way. He could even figure this out. Is Twitter profitable? No. It used to be. How does he have time? It used to be. I have, that's the one thing I would die to know. I mean, I don't know. It's just to like, to literally, like, what had to happen to get a fucking sink? You know, like, I'm sure you just texted somebody, but like, you had to sink. You had to think about this. <laughs> yeah. You had to meet outside <laughs> of the parking lot. You had to grab it out of the back of someone's fucking yeah, and escalate. That's such a and you had to, it looked like a big sink too. It was heavy. <laughs> yeah, and he definitely. Yeah, you're right. It, it took walking, at least walking. It took at least ten to fifteen minutes of his day to yeah. make sure that sink. That seems like a up. Jason Calcanis move. You think Jason added on the sink? Yeah, it's a good move. But still, to think about the it sink, was so, it was so viral. Like I could see Jason Calcanis coming up with that. I mean, there are days when I'm just being honest. Like if you told me like if there was something equivalent in my i'll give you i'll give you a perfect example like i started playing tennis with our friend brian and the second time i showed up to tennis brian was like damn knowing you i expected you to show up in a full tennis outfit <laughs> and in my head i was like i just didn't have the time right that's a bullshit excuse but i honestly <laughs> believed it like i had to go online i had to look at the stuff i didn't have time i had a busy week but this motherfucker, I would say that's an equivalent time. Me picking out an outfit to you know, must procuring a fucking sink. And he has time, and I don't, to buy some fucking Roger Federer's and a polo. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going yeah. on? I mean, I think, like, one, it's, it sounds like, I think there's some, like, big vesting thing happening on Tuesday. So, between now and Tuesday, they're expected to be the big layoffs. He's hacked all these people already. Look, so, like, he's actually spending time in San Francisco. Yeah. Carrying sinks around. <laughs> it's crazy. I mean, you saw the video of him like at the dining hall or whatever. Like yeah. he seems to be present. I mean, look, he he just put a lot of his wealth into this company. Mm -hmm. I think he has to pay attention for at least six months. Six months is what I, I wonder what's his goal because obviously they're very sophisticated investors that back this. Yeah. I know they wanted to be in the business of Elon. Yeah, they so don't like, give a shit, they don't about, give the a shit about the money. Twitter. I agree. I agree with that. The investors don't because they want to be in the SpaceX IPO. They want to be in the boring IPO. They want to be in Starlink IPO. IPO. It's like, <laughs> oh <my laughs> shit. And by the way, guess what else is going to go public? Twitter in two years. Yeah. So yeah. I, yeah, I'm curious from a financial perspective, does he even give a shit? Like to get this thing like free cash flow? I think he does because of the debt sitting on the business. By the way, casually <laughs> dogecoin went up a hundred percent in a week because i think i should have saw that coming I, that should have been yeah that should have been obvious an easy one. bet yeah it's just like people are like yeah why not this is going to be the currency of twitter yeah i i couldn't a... believe how much it's gone up. i think it went from like six and a half cents i think i, I saw it peaked at 14 cents um but well, is this, it still up right now yeah i mean still i think it was like 12 cents when i looked this morning um but Let's see here. I mean, Do Dogecoin was largely irrelevant. Yeah, it's for still a long at 12 time. cents. Last, yeah. Here's my question. And I guess we've probably ran this question into the ground, but like when people like Shonda Rhimes or whatever, you know, are so anti Elon, like in my opinion, there is no single person doing more for all of these like very liberal issues, um, climate change and stuff like that. There's just, there isn't anyone else on earth that is doing actually making more of an impact so that that's fair but i think the way he approaches life and he's working 20 hours a day yeah but to the youth they think it's all a joke so i think that's where i struggle with you have all these young people 
think like, oh, it's so cool to walk in with a fucking sink. Yeah. And like Dogecoin to the, the moon. guy hasn't slept in two weeks. <laughs> yeah, but that's he, not but he's but he's portraying himself as this like a meme. As a meme yep. that life's all a joke and he's actually working probably twenty four hours a day. Yeah. But so my thing is, even feeling that way, even if you felt really strongly he's that talking way, about like liberal you people. don't hate him enough to say, I'm not getting on Twitter because he jokes too much. Like, how do people, like, do you guys know what it is that they, they hate him so much that it's like, well, see you guys later. He, I'm he, off Here's the here. reality. This is the world we live in. If you are left, anything that um, feels conservative, you are anti. So if money, you, like, like gaining a lot of wealth aligning with anything conservative forget wealth not even just uh, wealth because he posted a couple of years, yeah if yeah. you align with oh, i'm gonna let donald trump back on the platform i'm gonna let got it blah 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 do this i'm gonna go meet with donald whatever whatever it is you are banded as public enemy number one simultaneously if you're right and you know you go you know watch an nba game you equally hate that person too yeah, it's yeah, it's yeah. it's Got we're it. at this so, point where like you can't be in the middle yeah there's no such thing as a middle you have to pick a side and die on it die on it <laughs> die yeah death literally literally light die. yourself on fire and die yeah exactly that's and you know if you're gonna die as elon you bet you better off dying on the right yeah, I mean, you're it's dying way in the more middle. fun. Die in the middle. He's in the middle. He is. All you have to do is be in the middle. Joe Rogan's in the middle. All these people are in the middle, and they might as well. But be. you can't. You can't be in the middle. We don't. We don't. Well, like, we Joe, don't like Joe the Rogan's class. a perfect example. He's the biggest media outlet in the world, and yeah. he's considered and right wing. Yeah, but he's actually in the middle. But so that's what people actually want to consume, and they leave him out of Democratic fucking ads. Like, yeah, but but if you ask a Democrat, thing. Joe Rogan is like, oh, that's Donald Trump's spokesman. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. It is. That's what people yeah, think. I'm true. telling you, that's true. If I talk to a liberal person about Joe Rogan, they think he's like, like a white, like a lot of people think he's a white supremacist. Yes, yeah. just because he has shaved head. Yeah, you kind of you're fucked if you have a shaved head and you're white. And tattoos, and yeah, tattoos, yeah, tight yeah, shirts. I mean, he yeah. looks like a white supremacist. <laughs> UFC, <laughs> you do UFC shaved head. Yeah, yeah, you're fucked. But it's just, I don't know, man. It's so. But I guess that's the, my point. We, I, I hear your point. Where yes, if you asked a liberal person about Joe Rogan, they would they would vomit. Yeah. But if you actually look at the numbers, he's actually what people want to consume. That's what I'm so know, confused the about. Because the majority of the actual country is closer to the middle everyone in the middle is popular yeah and that's why yeah all the alt people aren't actually popular no so it's just like elon weird. is arguably one of the most popular men on earth probably one of the most popular businessmen of all time no i would say he is the most popular businessman yeah. of all time like i, I if but you how do you not see that as a as a congressperson or uh anything and no, not because be like, ah. you know the, the 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 politicians don't actually have opinions publicly yeah. they're just weighing in on what public perception is so the public perception of like super liberal people is that elon musk is bad for society because he's allowing a... so the reality this is what's happening they said that once Elon took over, that like racism and all this shit on the platform went through the roof. The person head of policing Twitter, I started following him and he said, all of the slurs that everyone's talking about came from 300 accounts. They aggressively posted it yeah. and they've all been banned. There's probably democratic... That's the thing. People funding bots. That yeah, are, of course. Like, you know, there's yeah. this funny business going so on. So speaking of funny business, there yeah. was a big uh, thing over the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> so um, Nancy Pelosi's husband yeah. was violently attacked. Yeah. You know, Godspeed, you know, uh, recover quickly. Yeah. But. <laughs> funny business. This is a perfect example. This whole episode might as well be about social media and this is another example of and i'm not trying to be light about the situation but like the, sure. i i when i first saw it, i was like i i did the same thing everyone did oh maga extremist yeah punched this guy out that's some know. information got released yeah that david debape or whatever this guy's name is yeah was in his house just to if you don't know who nancy pelosi is nancy pelosi is third in line to be the president god yeah. forbid anything happened to joe biden or kamala harris yeah i don't care who you are you have 
fucking security if you're yeah. third in line. The, the government gives you security, I yeah. would assume. I think that it's mandatory, is it not? It's safety for the country. Yeah. So some random lunatic. Debape. Debape pulled up in his underwear. With a hammer. With a hammer and beat the shit out of him. said, where's Nancy? So the San Francisco yes. PD says they did not have a relationship uh, before. I mean, come on. Sure. So sure. are you guys who, who is tinfoiling this? Yeah. I'm tinfoiling. I'm tinfoiling it too. I'm not sticking to any. I'm, Do you not, know I'm who not saying Nancy, what. Nancy Pelosi is the most powerful woman in the country. Yeah. So Elon tweeted some misinformation. And no, he deleted, tweeted, he deleted said, it. He, he, he tweeted and said. But Elon doesn't delete a tweet unless he knows he fucked up. Yeah, that's true. What do you say? No, Hillary he, posted it, the thing, this whole thing, like look at the violent MAGA, whatever. And he just posted an article and said, there's something fishy here. So the oh, our, the the yeah. problem is the news source, the news site, the Santa Monica Observer, yeah. is like widely known to s always post false shit. Yeah. So is that what he retweeted or something? Yeah, uh, he retweeted. But Glenn it. Greenwald came out and said, "Here are all the facts to this case that don't make sense to me." Yeah, like it was a Glenn welfare Greenwald's check. Greenwald's also tinfoil. Yeah, this is the problem. If you're anything but right, also, you're tinfoil. Not, yeah. That's not right. I mean, but I get to say, the bottom of the like. But great. Um, who? Glenn Greenwald. Glenn, Glenn Greenwald. Is not like Alex Jones. No. No. No, no, no. He's not Alex Jones. Like he's one of, you know, he's a great, great journalist. I would say for the most part. I'm sure he misses. He, yeah. Right? Am I wrong? Yeah. I, I, mean, I don't think I would label him as like, um, oh, you can't trust anything that guy says. No. No. I, I, so. I, yeah. I wouldn't say that. I think. I also can't trust New York Times and Washington Post anymore. I can't trust anybody. How could you after the last few no, years? No, you, the reality is you should take the information, believe whatever the fuck you want. <laughs> so that's how I do it. Because I, if you look at New York Times and Washington Post, this guy was a MAGA psychopath that went to go attack Nancy Pelosi's husband. You could believe that. I could believe that too. Yeah. But and I just don't true. know why this guy is in his underwear. And then uh, there's all these people talking in San Francisco that... Paul Pelosi frequents skate bars. Yeah. And that's his thing. Like he known to be in that circle. And also like the police at first called it a wel welfare check. Yeah. Like wouldn't you call him and be like, hey, I'm this fucking guy in underwear with a hammer. Fucking it sounds And they, first they said they knew each other. Now they're denying they ever met. It's like. So the, yeah, this is all I'll say. It could have happened exactly how they're saying it. Yeah. I'm not just saying. Just seems fishy. Yeah. I'm not saying it can't be exactly, but like I don't trust fucking anybody anymore. And that story is too weird. The underwear is just weird. Did he come in in his underwear? Or are they exactly. Yeah. Where are the, just show the surveillance. Here's the thing. That's it. You could dead this whole thing in one second. Show the surveillance of David DeBappe. DeBappe, yep. Coming in his underwear Scaling with the, the hammer. Fence. Yeah. That's it. It's over. <laughs> it, is, am I wrong? He just said coming in his underwear. <laughs> this is really funny. I, mean, I couldn't help it. I tried to let it go. <laughs> Because um, I don't want that security. But by the way, clear. like that's it. It's over. And then yeah, sh they're right because so so the so Axios uh, in their newsletter I get over the weekend says a source briefed on the investigation tells me Paul Pelosi's attacker had a bag of containing zip ties in a disturbing echo of January sixth. Why it matters? The presence of zip ties, which can be used to immobilize a victim, add to the menacing circumstances surrounding the home invasion. David DeBappe, <laughs> 42, tried to tie up the husband of Speaker Pelosi. Why was he in his underwear? Uh, the husband of Speaker Pelosi. Axios does not talk about that. Exactly. Thank you. It just feels... The underwear, and like, you know, this just guy's getting DUIs underwear. every fucking weekend when Nance is out of town. He got a DUI. This guy's an idiot. <laughs> yeah. He's, a th he's like, I know exactly where they live. The it's a fucking phenomenal area. Exactly. I was just there last week. That's what I'm saying. You're Is telling there a me Dibappe's Dibappe's walking around there? Walking around. <laughs> there, there's, it's, it's, a, uh, it's the one last part of San Francisco that's still pristine. But how'd the bops get in the house? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> he just waltzed in? Well, the, he's, well the, that, that's what this uh, sheriff at Saint, in St. Louis that I saw on Twitter post. He's like, I am not partisan, but when you break into a home... The glass is supposed to go on the inside, not the outside. Oh, was it outside? Yes. Oh, no. <laughs> it's just like, look, I think at this point, after all we've been through for the past few years, if you don't... It's the same if thing. You don't with, ask, if you don't just think it's a little fishy, Yeah, I think... Yeah. Right? Yeah. Look, uh, people are probably listening thinking we're crazy. I, I kind of think you two are crazy. I, I, Do you really? Yeah. You don't think Paul Pelosi's out of control? 
He got a DUI. He's 83 years old. <laughs> Why the fuck are you he drinking and driving? Mention, he's You're so rich. rich. <laughs> You're inside <laughs> trading all day. There's like, a Twitter account that literally follows how much. They, yeah. uh, Nvidia. We're gonna sell this talk yeah. of the China thing. Oh, happened. shocker! I mean, I'm gonna get day. wasted and drive my <laughs> fucking Benz home. <laughs> yeah. I mean, come on, this guy's a clown. <laughs> he's a great a clown. So, Alan, you don't. You're. Are you buying the story completely? I think it's really easy to come up with a narrative because Pelosi has kind of become a meme yeah. with the insider trading. Yeah. <laughs> like, so Don't you think that's it's, a problem? Yeah, I mean, that's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's <laughs> fucking committing crimes. <laughs> In the Damn. open. And when they're asking her if she'll ban it, she's like, no. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's easy to go down that rabbit hole of yeah. like, Obviously, this isn't true because we don't trust anything Nancy Pelosi says. Look at her fucking stock yeah, trades. Yeah. Yeah. But to clarify, there's, my position is not obviously this isn't true. It's just no, I, I there's agree enough too. here. I, I actually that think we gotta it tell could some be jokes. completely exactly what it is. It could. I just clarify it. Release yeah. the tapes. It's not a big deal. Especially but, this close to midterms. I just. Dude, honestly, if you release the tape and that's what happened, it. It'll help the Democrats. The, Actually, it's probably, the, to be honest, it'll probably help the Republicans because it's a crime issue. Yeah. You know, Debate was true. probably arrested yeah. three weeks ago and let off. <laughs> I mean, I just think, and by the way, like, it makes Twitter very entertaining. Ugh. TikTok I, too, man. It's all over TikTok. What, what's, what's interesting is, is uh, I was watching a video of Obama in Wisconsin and he was super passionate about supporting whoever the senator he was um campaigning for mm -hmm. it was so fucking good he's his, just his speech yeah, yeah i mean yeah forget you know let's you know if you can debate whether he was effective or not when he speaks yeah it is so effective. Yeah. And then someone was like, I saw on TikTok this guy. He's like, Obama was great. And he was like, he would, he did his voice and he'd be like, he's like, we're going to do this. And then we'd go do it. Yeah. And we're going to do this. We're going to do it. And he's like, <laughs> Biden, he's like, you know, Joe, he's going to change the toilet or whatever. It's just like, he just. <laughs> He just says button says whatever. It was a TikTok video. <laughs> yeah. we, I couldn't even fucking. I'm not even following. What are you talking Basically, about? Basically, this guy <laughs> was just saying. That's exactly what you're saying. He said that Biden. D oh, is Biden in yes, this moment. <laughs> Obama was very direct. He said, we're going to go in Afghanistan. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And he's like, Biden will be like. Let me tell you a thing about America. Yeah, we're, we're going to go bowling and then we're going to go see my friend Joe. I was like, in the hills of Wisconsin. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. What's going to happen at midterms, man? We're getting up to... So that's the big, you know, this is a very famous political strategy called the October surprise. Like, what is the surprise that each party can come with yep. that gets momentum. So everyone was like obviously joking the Pelosi Pelosi thing was October surprise. Yep. I don't think that matters on a national level. Maybe it does. I don't know. I just don't think that's good for a public or for Democrat. Well, yeah, I guess I mean, we said right, MAGA terrorists. Right now yeah. it's polling that Republicans are gonna take both. Yeah. That's that, crazy. That's, that's what it's polling at right now. But that changes every week. Yeah. What's Caruso? What are you guys feeling? Well, it feels like it's a dead heat. Yeah. I feel like on 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 election day I think they're both like the margin of error right now. Mm -hmm. I think on election day though like and it, I mean I I can't remember a mayoral race in LA that was polarizing ever. Yeah, and even when R Richard yeah. Reardon won, he was Republican. I don't even think that was polarizing. No, it wasn't at all. I remember that. We were old enough to remember when that race yeah, happened. Yeah, and that was not and and now it's like it's, it and it's like I, I don't think people want to even entertain the other side on either side a bass supporter yeah does he want to hear about Caruso a Caruso supporter does he want to hear about Karen Bass that's what's funny because you're talking about two Democrats yes you know what well, I mean well some people will say that of course but still but still he's still running as a Democrat it's not even like a uh, a center Republican. Or well, you know, it's similar to that. You, I don't know if you saw Obama endorsed Karen Bass and said, well, you have to, they're making this about abortion, the local mayoral race, mm. and saying that the only pro-choice candidate is Karen Bass. Which I, it's disappointing because that's factually inaccurate. Yeah. 
because Caruso said he's pro-choice? Yes. Th there was like news from like 20 years ago. That he supported. That he supported some uh, sort of pro-life cause, but he's uh, come out publicly and said he's pro-choice. It's all bullshit. I mean, look, I think it's going to be, we're going to have some entertaining TikTok conspiracy videos. Yeah. And it's going to be a really entertaining night of counting the votes. Yeah, I think. You know what's really scary is I think we've gotten to a point, especially 2024 with the presidential, everyone's going to call it fraud either side. Yeah. Whoever sure. wins. You That's have to sure. call it fraud. You have to now. Anytime you lose anything <laughs> in life, yeah. you say fraud. It's a good strategy. Can you imagine? That's really a Trump strategy. Can you I imagine think, day if one. what, because I think Democrats are less violent, but can you imagine if the Republican presidential nomination, whoever it is, DeSantis Trump, yeah. loses to whoever is running on the Democrat side? No. There will be actual riots. No. I, if it's Trump, maybe. If it's DeSantis, no. You're saying if DeSantis is lost, no one would care? Because it's a very different... He, people are not as passionate about oh, yeah. DeSantis as they are about Donald Trump. It's very different. But also, like, do you think that, like, Trump, Trump changed, like, the party? Here's my question. It has been, as far as I know, um, um, every election, the loser calls to concede to the winner. I think every one, I mean, for the mm -hmm. most part. Does, does, in 2024, does that happen? Does the loser concede night of? Because that night you, of, I don't think so. Because no if you way. do that, it's going to be so damn close. Yeah, think about it. It's go, it's going to go down the wire unless you know the economy just continues to fall off a cliff. Yeah, then it's a landslide for the conservative side, whoever the candidate is. But I, I just I think it's going to be so close. I have a I, dumb question. What happens if Joe Biden doesn't run again? Who's the Democrat? They, well, got they, to do the whole, they start they, from scratch. He said he's running. Well, no, he, he, didn't. he didn't. Did he? He didn't say. No, but he's like, yeah, I'm, I'm planning to be here. That's a, <laughs> they can't do that. Right? I think I, if it was me, I'd put Paul Pelosi. <laughs> he's older. He knows how to he's have fun. Older. Yeah. I mean, at least, at least he'll be somewhere more secure. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you can't get in the White House in your undies. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Oh my God. Okay. By uh, the way, uh, Twitter just came out and announced just now, like in the last hour, that for verified checks, they're now going to charge you $20 a month. If you want to keep your blue check. Damn. That's a great idea. It's a great idea. Who wouldn't pay it? You have to. In fact, yeah. I think it should be tiered by the number of followers you have. So you have 10 million <clears throat> followers. You should pay 10 grand a month. Yeah. You're making that easy. If you have 10 million followers, you actually make money on Twitter. Oh, you should. I mean, that should be some pressure. I mean, what do you have? Like, how many followers do you have? You have a million followers or something? On Twitter? No, 500,000. Okay. Yeah. And you don't yeah, even tweet. I was never big on Twitter. Yeah. Not a talker. You're, you're, not a writer. <laughs> not a writer. <laughs> not much of a, I don't have many hot takes. Yeah. yeah you should, we should be taking five grand from you. Yeah, you're true. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> because also it would force me to shit or get off the pod. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah, like either I, didn't have, I didn't monetize this thing or yeah. I'm fucking shutting it down. Yeah. I agree. Let's. There's two more things on my mind about social media before we go on okay. to some other business news. Number one, just quick touch base <clears throat> fucking kanye oh yeah is on instagram tonight just going balls to the wall yeah you know, and he keeps going to it's, ari emmanuel which I, I mean if you don't live in la or new york you may not know who he is yeah and we talked about in the last episode you don't fuck with this guy you just don't you just don't and his brother is rom yeah which is like political <laughs> Like, you know, he's Obama's guy. Yeah, it's just like, like... As brothers. I don't know how the fuck they were raised, but as <laughs> brothers, they run this shit. Yeah. And he keeps... There's a third brother that's like... Oh, you're a, right. In the medical... Like, uh, he's like a medical elite, like... Isn't there a sister, too, that's really... Or am I wrong? I don't I know. There was, uh, there's there's yeah. definitely a brother that's like, runs John Hopkins or something. <laughs> something crazy. <laughs> okay, so... And then he keeps making... He keeps call, saying, like, business people, in quotes, which is... Yeah. You know, Reference. covering for saying Jewish people. Yeah. He went on, he was on like talking to paparazzi, showing all the people that were Jewish that were like, own. I mean, to me, I actually thought at this point, like we'd reached the point of him having to kind of chill out. I think he's going to like a really dangerous place. Like, I don't know. I didn't really feel like it was that dangerous before. I felt like everyone knew he was kind of kooky. I knew you had some guys with some banners over the 405. I know that's really fucked up, but this feels to me like he is like, I don't know. Like he, he's like, spinning it in this way that like jews are literally 
destroying Kanye West. And that feels to me like there will be some fringy, crazy I mean, people who will actually do something. I think he's going to go bro. Uh, uh, Florida, yeah. Georgia game. Was that? Yeah. Happened in Jacksonville, Florida. And some woman was at a hotel at night. And on the top of a building, like in one of those LED signs, says Kanye was right about the Jews. Or is right about the Jews. I mean, that, I saw a TikTok. I have no idea if it's real or not. I saw a TikTok from a Jewish man in New York who said, I have never experienced as much racism or anti-Semitism as I have this week. It's been crazy. I believe it. And, and, and the reality well, how is... How did Instagram let him back on? I think he had like a week ban or something. I think that they started like adopting shorter timeouts. I don't know. I don't, but I think that's what happened. I think I mean, and you know what's even scarier? Is if you look in his comments on his post, <clears throat> the there's a lot of support. I know. There's yeah. a lot of support on TikTok. Yeah. There's a lot of people like what you guys don't understand, Kanye's trying to tell you. Yeah. I'm just saying it didn't well, feel dangerous it, to way, me two weeks ago or a week ago. It now feels like instead of being like, oh, I'm going to go sit this one out. I'll be back in a month to, with a different topic. It feels like he makes these weird points that if you're if you don't know any better, you're going to watch Kanye go broke and you're going to be like, wow, the Jewish people did this to him. That's why Some I think crazy it's people think more, than, more than ever, you got to crush him to the ground. How? That's a reality. Cut him off. Absolutely. Cut him off like just every platform. platform. TMZ has to stop reporting him. He needs to be completely crushed. He's co he doesn't realize, you know, uh, there was a commercial before the NFL game that Robert Kraft did there are only 8 million Jewish people in America. Damn. Yeah. That's wild. What? I mean, come on. Like, it's not a huge population here. And so I think he is just creating this groundswell. It was the same thing like what Trump did with Kung Flu. Yeah. What all many people in the past have done. And we've nipped it in the bud and said, no, we're not tolerating this. Yeah. And I know people are saying, oh, well, Kanye's right. Hey, they're playing into the everyone's cutting him off. Because, like, we don't want to promote this hate amongst anybody. Yeah. But any group. <clears throat> it's not just. That's the fucked up thing, though, is yeah. when people say that. Yeah. See, he's right. Yeah. Look at what they're doing to him. Yeah. That is fucked up. Because it's not Jewish people banding together to say, fuck you, we're going to destroy you now. It's just people that don't people. stand for racism and whatever. But he's. He's spinning it really well. Yeah. And you are going to, if you believe Kanye, which a lot of people do, he is going to go from the richest black man in history to Homeless. fucking broke. <laughs> yeah. Like he's 100% he's he's going dead fucking broke. He's definitely going and, broke. And there he, are a lot of people who are going to say Jewish people did that to him. He was right. Yeah. No, he, he did it to him. I know. But that's just, it's fucking crazy. And the next person who's going dead broke is Kyrie Irving. That was going to be my next one. <laughs> so Shocker. what's going on? So I only, you know, once again, I'm, I'm the, I'm the dummy when it comes to sports. I saw a little bit of it. Kyrie like posted a documentary or, or a, a movie or something from Alex Jones that was anti-Semitic or what, what, what happened? Alex Jones posted something about a documentary and he just reposted it. And was it, it, did he repost like Alex Jones? Mm, yes. Exactly Alex Jones? It's, it, like was, his account? Uh, it was a post from Alex Jones from the 90s. Yeah. So he, he posted that and. And I then mean, why he, is he watching he, this shit? <laughs> he also like posted a movie that is largely considered anti Semitic. On his Instagram. Yeah. So the owner of the Brooklyn Nets, Joe Sai, he is the CEO of Alibaba. And he came out and like said, we don't stand with Kyrie or his posts or his comments. Then after the game yesterday, he was defiant with a reporter. I saw that clip. Which by the way, if you look at even the, com I watched that video and the reporter was just asking him and then he spun it and said, you know, he said, like, I have nothing to do with Alice Jones or Sandy Hook. Like, I'm, there's nothing to do with that. Yeah. And the reporter was like, well, you know, the thing you posted, you know, you're promoting something. He's like, I'm not promoting, promoting anything. Yeah. And the reporter is like, when you have that, and, and this is what people don't understand. When you have millions of followers, yeah, tens of millions of followers, and you post anything, yeah, 
you are in fact promoting it. But what are you doing if you're not promoting it? Like, yeah. what, 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 you obviously are promoting that's what it. I'm saying you're saying check yeah. this out. And so oh, you read the comments are like, oh, Kyrie owned the reporter. I was like, what? What? I know. How fucking stupid are these comments? Uh, comments should be disabled for dummies. Because I gotta see. I gotta see like yeah, a you, college degree. I gotta see gotta a reading a test. test. It should be like a driver's license. Yes, you pass a test, you get to comment. Yes. Yeah. I literally you get your badge. I yeah, because college degree doesn't mean anything either. <laughs> exactly. I'd rather see. Yeah, you gotta pass a test. Yep. You give your opinion on Ten fifty things. Yeah. <laughs> and if you do all right, that's the social media I want to live in. Because I yep. was like, oh, he owned him. Kyrie speaking the truth like yay. This is like, the problem. Whoa. Yeah, there's a lot this, of that. This is the problem. A lot that, of that. I think these guys have fans that will ride or die. They think, oh, he's playing chess. Everyone else is playing checkers. 100%. No, he's playing with himself. I know what he's doing. He's not playing he's chess a, or checkers. I think Kyrie is out of pocket on like most of the shit he says and does. Yeah. And people are siding with it, is what scares yes. me. Yes. That is the same thing I'm saying about Kanye. And then Kanye posted Kyrie. Yeah, real there's some real ones left. Yes. And now so there's it's like this thing of like He posted Stephen A. Smith. Stephen A. Smith is the biggest personality on ESPN. Yeah. I'm curious if he brings it up on first take. Because why does he post him? Does he support Kanye in some he's, way? Not that I know of. No, he's not he, supporting him. Huh. And uh he said in fact there was a there was a quote <clears throat> that said, Stephen A. Smith said, You are going after Jewish people. You are the richest black man ever, according to you. If everyone is going against you, how did you become the richest black man? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Oh, it's so gnarly. I, I, this think is about it, my he wildest can't, He can't tour. Live Nation is never going to put him on tour. You can't yeah. get a bank account. Can't get a bank account. If you want to pay Kanye money, you can't. You can't. You guys <laughs> Good use case for crypto. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can't tell what happens. This has went further and in a weird direction than I could have ever imagined. Yeah, it's 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 actually really scary now. Before it was like the uh, first scary. iteration was like whatever he's wacky Kanye. Then it kind of got sad. Now it's scary. And then Kyrie is just is Kyrie still playing well? No, I mean he's still a good player. Yeah, he's I mean, still that but that, that suck. But that's for By many the way, reasons. It, the stadium he plays in, the neighborhood is like 100% Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I don't know why, like, he he always... Why does he even get into the ring with this? I don't know. Because he's trying, he thinks he's playing chess. He thinks he's Kanye. You, there's did, a, there's you a, did a short story long with Kyrie. It was a flat rails. It went off the rails. It, there was a moment. There yeah, was, man, I remember listening He wanted to make his own self-sustainable community. But I've spent a decent amount of time with him. He's always such a kind guy. And I don't think he's a mean guy. Even when I guy. called him to do the podcast, he's like, sure, I'll be there. We I went to Miami for swim week. He came to our party with a fucking whole leg and a brace. He had crutches in the club. Yeah. Supportive, great guy. <laughs> Just can't help give himself all this fucking... What are you doing? <laughs> Alex Jones? Yeah, I, th I think the, the bigger... Uh, there was an ESPN commentator that tweeted about it was saying that like... Kyrie is like a faux into intellectual mm -hmm. and that when you're when you're one of those types of people you just get caught up in these like yep. yeah uh, that, that I see but I'm this the Stephen A I'm really curious because he doesn't want to be affiliated with him he, his career's over Kanye just posted him so you He's can infer out, yeah. you can infer from that post like oh they must be talking I'm sure they're not but Stephen A's gonna address it I think on first take tomorrow yeah I mean you have to you have to by the way, he works for the mouse. I yeah. bet someone's called him already and said, so, you're what's addressing going on? Yeah, you'll be addressing Mickey. this tomorrow. Yeah. Hey, hey, hey Steven. Steven. Um, nice what's cushy job. You want this to be your um, last take? I'm going to need to see you in Anaheim tomorrow. Well, I'll see you later. <laughs> Get your apology hat on. Yeah. Um, uh, that would be amazing if you were reprimanded by any Disney... Like, like literally making that's how mascots. they should do it yeah. that's how they should do it <laughs> if i ran disney i would demand that all reviews and punishments be done uh, by the mouse mary you're late 16 times this year um uh, get the fuck out of here to fuck right <laughs> off <Mary. laughs> minnie's on the way out to see, fucking see see your so out. You, you would think reporters are going to ask Kyrie about kanye now right <clears throat> after the next game i don't even think they'll let him back in the press room in new york city 
I don't know. It's the, you just, dude. This guy's gonna dig himself a grave, and he's not gonna have a career. You know what's crazy is he's in. A, he'll be a free agent after this season. <clears throat> Ooh. So do you think he gets signed? That's why I was asking how good he is. Still, he. I mean, he's making thirty-five million dollars this year, but he's still top of his game. Yes. Who's signing him? I don't know. Donda Academy. <laughs> 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 Did they close? Yeah, they're closed. I mean, and just Kanye way, like telling Ari Emanuel, like, don't do this to the kids. But the reason why it closed, according to other sources, is that the teachers were like completely offended by the yeah. comments. They're like, but that's we can't. what I'm saying. He's spinning it so well. Yeah. Not well, but good because for him. Because if you don't want to hear that part of it, no you just look like part. you ruined all these kids' education. Yeah. And he is making it look like the Jewish people are ruining these kids' education when no. No, in you did. In fact, you did, and the teachers are like, hey, we're, we're not fucking with this. It is scary. It's crazy. I didn't really think about the scariness until you brought it up, but it's, you're right. Because he's inciting. I think people so jump much... to scary too quick. I officially think it's scary. Yeah, because yeah. especially after that uh, sign you talked about, the Georgia-Florida game. Yeah. Yeah. That's nuts. That's nuts. Just when you're Do that Because you, you know what you're happens? Someone sees that, they hang out with a Jewish person, and now all of a sudden they have this weird feeling toward them which is fucking insane yeah. you know, this guy's an idiot a complete and, idiot and people who don't believe in that anti-semitism exists like any la jewish public or private school there's like armed guards oh yeah that are yeah. escorting the kids around when they like walk out i when i, I now they're probably on fucking high alert 100 percent. i run by a jewish school all the time when i run by and they see me all the time dude they and rightfully so, I have yeah. no problem with it. Yeah. I've never had a problem with people being, if you don't like what you see, yeah. fucking yeah. Butchery, <laughs> yeah. I'll walk the other way. Yeah. And, and they are, it's just, it's, it's. There's a reason they have armed guards. For yeah, they don't want schools. to. Yeah. They're not trying to spend fucking six figures a year protecting. Yeah. yeah. It's uh. wild. It's scary. It's sad. And it's we got to stop giving, it's like the, the, the platform has to stop. Like, you know, obviously social media will always be his, because even Andrew Tate's basically banned, right, from social media? Mm -hmm. And his clips are everywhere. Everywhere. <laughs> what That's, is he talking about? Are those old clips or? Uh, I think, I'm not too in his. He's a full lunatic, huh? I just he, got into a wormhole of his clips. He's a little wild. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, he, um. I think he still does a podcast somewhere, like okay. on Rumble or something like that. Okay. And then people post those clips on okay, like, okay. everywhere else. Because <laughs> it's hard. That's a weird thing. Like you were always able to just ban someone's account and you pretty much could silence them. But now if they get reposted like Kanye or Andrew Tate, they're all over the platform still. Yeah. Nothing you can do. Yeah. Social media is the worst thing to ever happen to this country. I think it is. The world. I think it is. I think it was empowering for the third world developing countries. And Why? I think, What's going on there? What country came out? What country in the last 20 years like the went from spring. third? Well, nothing happened. They're Maybe still fucking some, oppressed. Yeah. There were moments, but I, I honestly... No third country came to second. They're all th still third. I think that's true. China is the only country that has pulled themselves <laughs> they out control of... control their social media. That's the funny part. Yeah, yeah. they're the one country <laughs> yeah, that's country have, that yeah. came out that of poverty. actually came out of poverty. <laughs> At scale. Yes. I'm going to be honest with you. I think China... <laughs> I think China You're is a big China guy. I think they're doing social media the only way that you can do social media. <laughs> yeah. I do. Silence I everybody. think the only way social media works is if it's a fucking dictatorship and what you're allowed to say and do is so minuscule. Yeah. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying like yes, Chinese people should be able to society. post what they're but like I don't know, man. It hasn't we've been quote unquote the freest and I think the impact of it has been a net negative. But the problem is, this is the, 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 the test is, despite all the things we say and whatever we do, social media is all nonsense. For example, if you, I ran into a friend of mine that hasn't been on social media for three weeks. Yeah. Okay, just look cleanse. No idea what's going on. Yeah. Completely normal. Yeah. If you actually, like in real life, the stress of social media does not come up. When you're with your friends, when you're on the golf course, what are you talking about? Honestly, what are you talking about? Like your fucking swing? Yeah, yeah I guess. Or business. Hey, did you see who yeah. did what? Yeah, but you're not talking about the nonsense of social media. <laughs> you're talking media. about Andrew yeah. Tate. 
Yeah, yeah. Listen, did you see Tate's new video? <laughs> yeah. But uh, how much <laughs> reference to yeah. social media no, are you talking uh, about? None. Zero. Zero. I, I, I mean, literally, I, I hung out with a bunch of friends with kids today. There was only at the end did we t- mention Kanye. That was the only social media reference. Yeah. Everyone else is just like, yeah, we went to the park. We did this. Yeah. We did that. Like whatever, right? Like, I actually think if you if you just separate real life with social media. Real life is fine, is amazing in America. Yeah. It's just social media life that's kind of scary. But that's what like, um, like what has happened is, I think this is the biggest change is so many people are so active on social media, not in their real life. And they're very loud on social media and you don't hear what they're talking about on the golf course. And politicians have actually started to now reiterate some of that because they're reading that as like trends and what people are talking about. So now the politicians are getting a little more like radical, you know, like mm, whatever Mary Taylor Green or whatever. Marjorie. 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 And these different, like you see politicians that know that the tactic to rise above the noise and go viral on social media is to be a little bit more crazy. And then policies become a little bit more crazy. And then that's where I think it's like truly dangerous is these politicians don't hear what you're talking about at the park or I'm talking about at the golf course. They're looking at trends on social media, which are always more radical. Yeah. And so that's where They're it comes back to around to radical. affect yeah. real life is it will affect like policies and shit. Yeah. Like yeah. I think a lot of this radical, like these DAs and that shit is social media, yeah. like saying abolish crime, abolish cops, abolish whatever. And so people are running on that and they're getting voted in and crime is actually up. I think largely because of people that got elected Based on social media rhetoric. Yeah, I mean, our neighborhood cop was at our, like, we had like a block party in our neighborhood for Halloween today. Mm -hmm. Nice guys. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. (laughs) They're like, hey, do you guys have any issues in the neighborhood? I was like, honestly, no, I don't really have anything to complain about. You know, I know the normal stuff, but like, yeah, I'm not going to complain about that. Like, but think about how weird that is that that's even like kind of surprising. Like, I think. Like, not all cops, like, are just out shooting people, like, unarmed people. Like, it's just like... 99.9% like, or not. Like, not even close. It's yes. like... And it became this thing where, like, I don't know, we should abolish them or whatever. So the point is, now what happens is you have all these people talking about how dangerous LA is and how scared to death they are and scared for their kids they are. But those people aren't hashtagging and all over social media. Mm-hmm. And so we'll see what happens in these elections. But I think these elections, we're going to see a big, like, what are people actually thinking yeah because every city has been dealing with crime and yeah and i think i mean i could see it in like conversations people feel very passionate about this Mm -hmm. election by the way we have sam yebri who's running for council district five coming on the pod tuesday it's amazing and he's very well, this is our district. Out. We haven't had good luck with the Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, this is our district. I've I'm I'm friends with him. He texted me. He's like, gotta be on the pod That's before great. like the election. So he's coming on. He basically covers our area. That's where he's running against. That's cool. Basically th- in our building, mm-hmm. Paul Coretz's seat is oh, what he's going after. Uh extremely important district. Get Malrose, yeah. West, West, you know, all this part. He's basically everywhere the... that's deteriorated. Yeah, and and you know, and considering like all the anti Semitism, like it's in a pretty important district in the country. And so he's gonna come on the pod Tuesday. That's awesome. That's great. Yep. All right, we'll see what happens. A uh, couple more stories, real quick in the world of business. Um, uh, let's talk about Sheehan. Sheehan is just I mean <laughs> they've <laughs> just won. They've won, right? Yeah, yeah. It's over. Well, because they don't have to make money. Shein is reportedly profitable, which is bullshit. That's what it says. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so all our clothes are bought from Shein and all our social media is TikTok. And all of our drugs have fentanyl in it. <laughs> and there's one common thread. Yeah. And he's not going anywhere. <laughs> he just made himself emperor for life. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, what's the take here? The take, I, the take is that... They've out executed everyone in American e-commerce, and I don't think that's the take. I don't think they've out executed anyone. They just have unfair advantages. That's 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 why I think it's so unfair. Clarify They're, for the listener what the unfair advantage. Okay, the, is. the first unfair advantage is they've basically unlimited venture dollars. Yeah. Okay. Why? The, because because 
the main reason why is there is an enormous loophole in the way you sell goods direct to consumer from Chinese factories to the Americans. Yep. Anything under $800 directly from China pays no duties. Duties are anywhere between 10 and 25% depending on the category. Yeah. So cotton t-shirt, you know, some polyurethane, you know, plastic bag, all have different duty rates. Yep. You can ship someone from a Chinese <clears throat> factory direct to consumer in America, pay zero duty. Yeah. Which is so fucking stupid. Yeah. Like, how has no one closed that loophole? On top of that, they're venture backed. They've raised enormous amounts of money, billions of dollars. They are allowed to make goods in China under no supervision. Like, yeah. you, like do you understand? Like, no idea wages. which factories they're, Do you understand the scrutiny? Not getting audited. The scrutiny yeah. at we Disney don't know wages. factory. We don't know. Yeah. You know yeah. The, the scrutiny at Disney factory, a Nike factory, a Walmart factory has to go through, but yeah. she in factory goes through none. Yeah, they get the expose on business of fashion. Guess what? No one fucking reads that shit. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. And then on top of all of that, all, there's so many subsidies in terms of freight directly from China to the US that Chinese government is giving. Obviously, worker conditions. The pricing is so cheap. You're talking, you go on that site, there's stuff for $2. Yeah. $2? You could ship something from China to America and it's profitable? It's a lie. Yeah. They're not making money. I don't give a shit what anyone tells me. I want someone to open the books for me and see it. They're not making money. They're not out executing. They have unfair advantages. That's all it is. They're not some so special that they figured out that no one else did. They just have, I, they're, I mean, if anything, I, if, if I was in America, I would tell, I would go to rich. I would, I would, if I was Joe Biden, I would go yeah. to rich and fashion Nova. Bangladesh is going to let you do exact same thing. Yeah. Go fucking crush them. Yeah, and but now see, cause duties. his marketing is better. Yeah. Cause he's making so much money. He's an enormous business and he has no venture money. Yeah. But we're anti business. And, 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 and she is going to do $22 billion. We're weirdly very pro China business. That's what's weird. Yeah. Like they, they would never, they would never do that to an American business. They, they would give them all the fashion over. They would rather bring Zuck into Congress and just rip him an asshole yeah. than deal Question. with TikTok. Yeah. She is going to do $22 I mean, they hate... billion dollars in revenue. $22 billion. They purposely don't even say the name of the biggest business person in American history. Yeah. They don't even mention him. They don't include him in there. They, they talk about EVs. They talk about... They're like, talking about GM's <laughs> EV. Who has yeah. a GM EV? Yeah. Who? Nobody. It's wild. It's so weird. Do you know anyone so, that has So I think that's, that's actually full circle to your point because it's not popular from a media perspective to talk about a Chinese business, but it is popular to talk about Zuck. Talk down yeah. about Zuck. Talk yeah. down about Zuck. And talk down about Elon. Yeah. And talk down about Elon. Because yeah. that will get you views. But if you had a politician that says, hey, we should really look into Sheehan, everyone's going to be like, who cares? I like cares? those $4 shirts. <laughs> yeah. What'd you say? Duties? Where's it? What? <laughs> Whose duty is that? Not my duty. <laughs> but that's how in inept our, our entire structure is right now. It's wild. It's in incredible we, that no one in all of Congress has figured out TikTok or Sheehan. And I, I just want to say, if I, you were to. Pull the hundred uh, U.S. senators if they've heard of Sheehan. What do you think percentage is? Zero. No, someone will have a daughter that you know. Yeah, buys. three. No, I would you say think it's under I ten. Think it's, I, I think, think it's, it's zero. Absolutely under ten. I think it's zero. Yep. TikTok's think... ad revenue this year did eleven billion. Sheehan did twenty-two billion. Do you know where that twenty-two billion came from? American fucking businesses. Yeah. Twenty two billion say, dollars was stolen from American businesses. Yeah, I think it's, it's insane. insane. I gotta say, I know it's a way deeper level, but I just want to remind you guys that life expectancy is going down for the first time in a long time. For your people, not mine. For my people. Yeah. <laughs> Mainly, <laughs> <laughs> let's keep that clear. Indians are doing great over here, <laughs> For, but mainly because of fentanyl. Yes, yeah. and whatever the stat is, the number one killer of uh, males between eighteen yeah, and thirty-four, 40 or, something or something like that. Like, yeah, yeah, whatever. That is directly made in Chinese labs, shipped to Mexican cartels, 
with the intention of bringing it here. It is an operation. Like it's, it's Accepted. terrorism. It's, it's sort of like, you know, we worried about anthrax for so long. This, it's like, is, yeah. this is happening. No, it's, it's pretty wild. And I've never been one to judge if people want to do drugs, but you've got to be a moron in this climate to do any you of those You saw drugs. the Wall Street Journal article the last, the last two weeks. The number one story in the Wall Street Journal is three people ordered cocaine from some drug dealer last year. Yeah, yeah, yeah I saw that. And like, I saw their pictures. They're just like regular ass people. Yeah. yeah, like people weren't just like dying off a bump when we used to go out. That's what's crazy. <laughs> it's not people doing a crazy amount of drugs. Yeah. It's someone just casually. There's a story. Um, what was it? Oh, there was a clip from um, Dr. Phil was on Joe Rogan. And he s said that um, there was a young lady who... They swear they went through all of her phone records, everything. She was not a drug user. She had finals coming up. She was having trouble sleeping. So she bought a one Xanax pill from a friend, took a quarter of it to get some sleep before finals and died because there was fentanyl in it. So that's Xanax on the street, not Yeah, from, but it looks from... like the same thing. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. there's people who go get like surgery and then that's the way most people are getting addicted. But why is it? I mean, I have no idea. I haven't yeah. read any of the books. But why does it have fentanyl in it? It's cheaper. You could scale it. It's really easier. cheap and it's wildly addictive. It's way more. So if you, you get people hooked. So the thought is if you're um, these Mexican cartels, you're putting fentanyl in all your stuff. And now your client base is going to just get wildly more and more addicted to drugs. And so all of your pills and your Coke and your everything. And it's a higher margin product, right? Yeah. It's, it's really strong. It's really cheap. And everyone's going to be way more addicted. But there, because it's not like obviously regulated or anything, like there are people who go get surgery, get some Vicodin from their doctor. Maybe they still have a little pain. They need s some more Vicodin. Or like right now, I know for a fact that there's an Adderall shortage. And so uh, there's people who are prescripted Adderall that are like asking shadier people like, hey, do you know how to get any Adderall? And they're like, yeah. And like these things will have fentanyl in them, but they look exactly like they're from the pharmacy. You know what's crazy is that when you look at uh, the way people view America, people like to view everything in the lens of race. Yeah. That, oh, we did this to this group or that group. Here is the number one killer of white people and we're doing nothing. Yeah. Zero. What are we doing about fentanyl? Yeah, no, I, I mean, nothing. Nothing. So my point is, is that like, I know people like to blame race on everything. Yeah. I just think we don't do shit about shit. Yeah, and plus it's just all class. It's not race. That's where everyone's so confused. Yeah, it, exactly. And like they're getting tricked, man. It yeah. is not race. No. As much as, yes, I know that, trust me, I know some races some things, have, yeah. have it way worse. I, I know that. But the real, it's really a class thing. Yeah. And the differences between today and 40 years ago is that for 30, 40 years ago, the only classes of high class will write people yeah today yeah. it's a very diverse group that yeah. is that has wealth in this country yeah and i feel like it's also i mean i don't know that maybe this is stupid but it seems like there's a new bunch of white people that are now like really down and out yeah you know, it seemed like there was like upward mobility maybe for yeah. for white people or it seemed like that or but it seems like there is a whole group now that has been forgotten about and is on painkillers and all this shit oh, yeah. and dying yeah. and overdosing and no one cares about them e either no you know it's not know. it's not the politicians the politicians aren't doing shit for them yeah there's no way mexican cartels are bringing in however many billions a year of cocaine without someone on the inside here right letting them in i mean that goes down a whole different thing that i'm just not that educated <laughs> you watch on. narcos I did not. But I mean, you would have to believe so. I <laughs> you, mean, you can't, yeah, you, if you can't stop, I don't know what the number is. It's tens of billions of drugs yeah. from Mexico. Yeah. That doesn't happen accidentally. Or it's just imp like, I don't know. Yes, I, I hear what you're saying loud and clear. I don't know enough to say yes or no, but, or we're just really, no, there's no way. I mean, we have the best military in the fucking world. We could just have literally a line of <laughs> yeah. jets and tanks and guards. Yeah, so why aren't we like doing anything about the drug I don't influx? Know. This is full circle all goes down to, do we believe that there was no security at Nancy Pelosi's house? Mm, that's what this all comes back to. But and that's I also have to say, an issue that we'll talk about dude in his undies at length. Yeah. 
but we won't talk about she and TikTok. We did. We Just, talked about all those things. No, we did. Yeah. No, I'm, just, I'm saying. Oh, most people. Like most people. Most people are stuck on dude and undies. <laughs> they're not even, number one, no clue what she and is. <laughs> yeah. Um, the reason why TikTok. there are no retail jobs in America or retail is struggling or any of these things is because of she and, and no one's doing shit about it. She it. I'm telling you. Yeah. There's something there. I mean, if, if Facebook, uh, I don't know, Walmart, Amazon got together in their lobby, they should ban these companies. Yeah, I don't get how that's not happening. What are those guys doing? aren't stupid. Here's the craziest part about it all to me is we aren't allowed to do it there. Yeah. Yes. Period. It should just be like, okay, how about this? Let's all sit down at the table. Yeah. You guys let Instagram, Facebook, into China. Snapchat into China, as is, and we're all good. And they say no, and we say no. Yeah. So she and yeah. moved their headquarters to Singapore. Yeah. Smart. Convenient. Savvy. Yeah, they got it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I would say that I will say though, Shein is definitely a bummer and a huge threat to American business, but TikTok is like way in, worse. Like way worse. <laughs> when you see these stats about how much people trust, I mean, think about how much the government cares about like um, what mainstream media says and like how they're talking to voters and. Like you're gonna hand that to China. I, I, you, you know what the thing is? Is it's funny. <laughs> I even today I was talking to a bunch of parents. I was like, "Oh, you should watch this video on TikTok." It was something about kids, and he's like, "Oh man, I've never even been on TikTok." I was like, "Really? Yeah." I mean, like the whole world's on it. Yeah. Like everyone's on it. If you're not on TikTok, you're yeah. missing out. And yeah. I'm not even saying it from the sense of like, "Oh, you're missing out on a dance." No, yeah. no, no. Like the world is happening on this platform. <laughs> But see, that sort of contradicts, like, you know, when you were saying, like, social media doesn't matter in real life. No. Like, it, that's how impactful it is, though. Yeah. I, I'm just saying, like, the influence it has. Look, by the way, if you don't have any of these platforms, it's probably the healthiest and best day case situation. <laughs> yeah. Like, I remember when I, maybe two years ago, I turned off notifications on all social media platforms. And just my email is the only thing I kept. Dude, amazing. Yeah. Like my Instagram usage is so minimal now. Yeah. Because I just don't, I like, if I don't get notified, I literally forget to go on it. Yeah. I'm telling you once again for the listener, I do not have any of those apps on my phone. <clears throat> it's, a, I either download it to look at it. So the barrier to getting on it is so annoying that I have to really need a fix <laughs> or it's, like, it's on my iPad. Oh yeah. And, and it feels, I but mean, you're there on are, another phone. I have it on an iPad at home. Okay. And, but I don't like, um, like there is never a time for the most part, 99.999% of time where I am looking at, um, um, any social media until like 6 PM. Like I do my work stuff. That's six done. Six to twelve, you're just like ah, <laughs> and you're like that monkey, that yeah. monkey that just like typing. Presses the lever, <laughs> the rat with the fucking yeah. dopamine. Yeah, it's but good. but I'm not saying I'm not trying to act all high and mighty. I'm just saying it is yeah, life tough. changing when it comes to like how not feeling all like sporadic and pulled in a million directions. Yeah, no, I get it. It's it that's just poison. <laughs> it's wild. But the hand, it was, it was already a problem with Facebook and Instagram and whatever. And we, it's just like, since that whole, um, like Cambridge Analytica and Tristan Harris, Tristan Harris and that whole, remember that? Yeah. Like, yeah. Look what Facebook's doing. It just 10 X. It's way worse now. As bad as it is. Way and worse. no one's talking about it. By the way, he's just like, which is like the, the first half of the show is like, maybe it's a conspiracy. Maybe it's a not, maybe it's real. Yeah. <laughs> but you want to know the fucked up thing is I do believe <laughs> That if I'm gonna find the real answer of if of what happened to um, uh, Mr. Pelosi, I'm gonna find it on social media. I'm not yeah. saying I'm gonna hunt it down and find it tonight. I'm saying that is where you get the truth. Yeah, I, I'm agree. not gonna watch CNN to see what really happened. No, because everyone, Fox News and CNN, all have different incentives. Yeah. Okay. Do we have one last story? No, I think that's it. Okay, let's fucking end it. Um, the last story is too depressing. I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't want either. Um, okay, this was a great episode. Uh, I had a blast doing it. I, I don't know. I hope it didn't scare our listeners <laughs> too much. Look, you know, if you have a tinfoil hat on like a drama and I do. Yeah, join we're us. We're proud. Come on in. <laughs> join us. We're going to start doing a conspiracy corner uh, this segment. You, you know, know what? I really, I was, you know, frustrated about this weekend. I want a Twitter handle where I could see bipartisan conspiracies. 
Because the problem is, I feel like there's m- many of them. Slim Pickens. I know, but uh, I but think I want to see this. Last on... Nation's the last one. Which one? Both was that tights. bipartisan at the time? I think now it is. Which one is? The JFK assassination. I think bipartisan. Both Democrats and Republicans don't believe the story. I just want to remind people, because I thought about this the other day, again, I just want to remind people that there was a time, I would say it was kind of comparable to the Ukraine situation, um, being the Cuban Missile Crisis and people torn on what we should do and nuclear threat. And the president of the country in an open convertible got shot in the fucking head. And there's a whole conspiracy about who did it. It's just things like that that remind me that, okay, today feels crazy, but if that happened, yeah, you would be like, the world is over. Yeah. And so we might be okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> That's a good way to end it. I just want to end on a positive note. <laughs> All right. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, no shout outs, right? Okay. Uh, we will be back on Tuesday. Everyone have a great week.